The topic of this video is covalent and ionic bonds. And if you remember from the video from last night on atoms, elements, and compounds, I mentioned briefly in that video that we had an example of covalent bonds. So we were talking about all the things in this bigger blown up picture here as being different compounds. And I said there are bonds that hold them together. These are called covalent bonds and it involves the sharing of an electron. So we'll talk about both of these in more depth later on. But we've sort of already introduced this concept a little bit. We'll also talk about different kinds of bonds. We've got single bonds, double bonds, triple bonds. But the, the basic idea for a covalent bond is that it is sharing electrons. So I'll write that one down for you. Covalent. It's going to be sharing. Now the next one for us to talk about has to do with these ionic bonds. Grab this guy. Now an ionic bond, oh, let me get that text out of our way. There we go. So the idea behind an ionic bond is that in this case it's actually giving away an electron. So if we look at the picture here, what we're looking at is chlorine and sodium. This is one of the weird ones. Na stands for sodium. So NaCl is actually table salt. The way these two bond together ionically is the sodium has an extra electron and chlorine is looking for an electron. We'll talk about this more in a little bit, but these things are uh, the different orbitals where the electrons are outside of the atoms. You can see the inner orbital holds two electrons. The next orbital holds eight, and then we start counting up the next one, the one beyond that, two, four, six. That one will eventually hold eight as well. So what the atoms are trying to do is to get either uh, eight electrons in their outer orbital, or in the case of, of sodium, it's much better off just giving that one away, and then it has eight in this inner orbital. So when it has eight there, it's balanced. It's called the octet rule, so it's trying to achieve these eight electrons here. So that's why sodium and chlorine are the perfect partners. Sodium is looking to give away an electron, chlorine is looking to pick up an electron. Now this eventually has some impacts on their charges. You can see that sodium becomes positive, chlorine becomes negative. We'll analyze this a little bit more in a minute, but to make this one simplistic, what we're talking about here with ionic bonds is they're trading electrons. So you have one that's giving an electron away and the other one that is accepting an electron. So we'll take some time to talk about both of these things separately and break down some of the details between covalent and ionic bonds. So to start off, covalent isn't as simple as it looked in that first picture. Uh, usually I'll try to do this where I introduce a topic to you simply and then explain the details of it later on. Um, if we look at this one here, this is showing a water molecule. Maybe it would help if we turn it this way. Like we were talking about, we were discussing polarity. We are talking about the idea that water is a combination of oxygen and hydrogen. Now oxygen naturally has six electrons in its outer ring. Hydrogen, since it's such a small um, atom, it only has the ring that holds two electrons. So you can see the first ring for oxygen holds two electrons. Well, hydrogen only has that first ring because it's a very, very small atom. So in this case, hydrogen wants two electrons in its outer ring in order to be balanced, and oxygen wants eight. Now, oxygen naturally has six. So we'll put that one on here. Naturally has six for oxygen. Hydrogen naturally has one. I'll show you a picture of a periodic table so we can figure out how you would uh, know how many electrons each of those have. So if we look at our periodic table here, get our pointer back out. Oxygen, you can see, has an 8 above it. That means oxygen has 8 protons and 8 electrons. So if we squish this down, get it out of our way, all atoms have 2 electrons in their first ring, and then they're trying to get 8 in the next ring. So if oxygen, going back to our periodic table here, if oxygen only has eight electrons altogether. The first two go in that first ring and then it has six in its outer ring. Now if we slide this one over, we can look at hydrogen as well. 
hydrogens up here, you can see hydrogen only has one electron. So it just has one in that very first ring there. So that's an easy way if you use your periodic table as a reference, you can figure out how many electrons these things have. So naturally, one oxygen is going to bond very well with two hydrogens because oxygen has six electrons in its outer ring and it's looking to pick up two more. So it's going to share one of those electrons with one hydrogen molecule. It'll share the other one with the other hydrogen and it holds them together. So it's this whole idea of covalent bonding holding those two molecules together. Now, unfortunately, it's not always this simple. Uh, things don't just have to share two electrons. It can get a little bit more complex. So we'll get that one out of our way and take a look at nitrogen. Uh, nitrogen is an incredibly stable molecule. It makes up over 70% of our atmosphere, and it's because of this right here. It's because of this triple bond that it shares. So nitrogen technically is written as N2. So it's two nitrogen molecules bonded together. If we break out our periodic table real quick, take a look at where nitrogen falls on this thing. I'm just going to bring this one forward so that way it gets our text out of the way. Um, so if we're looking at nitrogen over here, you can see nitrogen has a 7 up there at the top. So remember, it's first electron orbital is going to chew up two of those electrons. And then nitrogen ends up with five electrons in its outer ring. So if we squash this one back down, this nitrogen is going to have two electrons here in the first orbital. And then it will have five electrons in the second orbital. Remember, it's trying to get eight out there. So the way it achieves eight is it ends up sharing three of those electrons with another nitrogen molecule. Or I should say another nitrogen atom. And so we end up getting a triple bond with them sharing all three of those electrons, and it makes nitrogen extremely stable because those three bonds are very, very strong holding that molecule together. Uh, you can also have double bonds in some instances. We had an example of that one on the previous page. It's the same idea, but now they're just sharing two electrons. And obviously a double bond is somewhere in between a single bond and a triple bond in terms of strength. Uh, the final one for us to talk about is the idea of ionic bonding. Now ionic bonding is a little bit trickier. We'll get our picture back here for us to reference. If we're looking at this one, ionic bonding involves giving away an electron like I talked to you about previously. Now if you remember, for sodium it has an extra electron, so the way we would figure that one out with our periodic table just involves finding, again, those numbers. So if we're looking at sodium over here, Na, it has 11. So remember, the first two of those electrons go in the first orbital. So if we look here, we've got the first two here. That leaves us with 9. So it has 8 in this ring. That ring's full. And then that one little straggler on the outside. So same kind of idea with chlorine. Blow this one up. Chlorine's over here on the right-hand side. You'll eventually get comfortable with finding everything on the periodic table. Chlorine has a 17. So now, if we go back to our picture, what that means, if we're counting these up, the first two go in the first ring. So now we've got 15 left to account for. The next eight are here. So that's 10 altogether, which leaves seven in the outer ring. Remember, chlorine wants eight out here. So what it ends up doing is just trading, or I, I really shouldn't say trading, because trading involves give and take. The sodium just ends up giving an electron over here to our chlorine. Now if you think, well, why don't they just bond and, and share it like they did covalently? Well, that wouldn't do any good for sodium, because sodium either needs to give this one away or get seven. Well, it's much easier to give one electron away than it would be for it to pick up seven electrons from somewhere else. So in this case, it's far simpler to just release one of those electrons to the chlorine, in which case our uh, charges change. These things become ions. Now you can have positive or negative ions. This has to do with the balance between how many electrons and how many protons are in our atom. Remember, protons are positive. So in um, a normal neutral molecule, you're going to have the same number of protons and electrons. This is something, again, you can figure out from your periodic table. So we looked at sodium before, Na. 
The number here is 11, which means it has 11 protons and 11 electrons. So if we get this one out of our way, when it ends up giving up one of those electrons, it now has one more proton than electrons, making it positive. Chlorine, of course, is picking up that electron. It now has one more electron than proton, and it makes the, the chlorine negative. So these will always end up with charged molecules. These two things are attracted to each other then, since they have opposite charges, and that's part of what makes the chemical change happen. That's what gives us salt. So salt is NaCl. It's these two um, ionic compounds that are together forming that molecule. That's part of why you can dissolve salt in water, because it's an ionic compound. So anything that's ionic usually dissolves very, very well. Uh, the main thing to take away from this one is that covalent bonding involves sharing, whereas ionic bonding involves giving away one of those electrons. The more we use the periodic table to figure out those numbers, the easier this will be. So this is just a general introduction for you. Make sure you answer the questions that go along with this one, and we'll work on some activities in class that give you more practice going back and forth between looking at some of these atoms and then looking at the information on the periodic table. Thank you for watching.